everyone, I hope you're having a great day. In this video, I'll be answering the question, how powerful is the Dargon Grazor in Elden Ring's DLC? To find out, we'll be creating the best and most effective build for the current version of this weapon. Just a few hours before the release of Shadow of the Air Tree, this weapon was nerfed along with other meta weapons from the base game. And it wasn't just the weapons that were nerfed, they dramatically reduced the effectiveness of all the buffs that enhanced the Dargon Grazor's potential as well. I'm pretty sure they did this to shift players' attention towards the new DLC weapons and they succeeded. But now that we have tried multiple DLC builds, it's natural to wonder just how far can we push the power of the original meta weapons that we used to play so much. The setup I'm going to show you today will allow you to compensate for the nerfs incredibly well. By the end of the video, I'll share my thoughts on how good or bad I believe this legendary blade is after playing with this new optimized configuration. First of all, I'm going to show you the build and then we will be the major boss of the DLC without taking a single hit. If you don't want to farm runes or materials for your Elden Ring builds, MMO XP is the best web service where you can easily acquire as much runes and items as you wish for the best price. Use my code CARLOSEN to get a 5% discount on your purchases. Thanks MMO EXP for sponsoring today's video. We are going to be using the Dark Moon Grey Sword on plus 10 and then still we have available to cast our main buffs. To cast our sorceries as fast as possible, we are going to use the Azure's Clinton staff, but if you don't have it, you can use any other you want. The only reason why I'm using this staff is because it's the fastest to cast spells, but the difference will not be that high if you want to use any other staff, and it's very probable that this time you're not going to need the Raptor Optimista Shovar, but just in case use it in any weapon to be able to dodge the Mikila's AoE attack. For the armor set, our best option is going to be the Rakshasa's armor set, because it will increase our damage by a total of 8% if we wear the entire set. As you can see, this time I am not going to use the Spellblade set. There is a big difference between one and another. While the Rakshasa's armor set increases your overall damage by a total of 8% if you wear the entire set, the Spellblade set will increase your damage by a total of 8%, but only for the skills related with magic, which means means that our regular attacks are not going to be boosted by the Spellblade set. That's why it is better to use the Rakshasa's armor set, but if you are tired of using that armor set, feel free to use the Spellblade set or any other armor set you find useful or that you enjoy to use. The best talismans we can use for this build are the Godfrey Icon, the Shard of Alexander, the Two-Handed Sword Talisman and the Magic Scorpion Charm. We are going to be using the Two-Handed Sword Talisman because they nerfed the Jellyfish Shield, so you are going to obtain a way better performance just by using your weapon with both hands under the effect of this talisman. But it is important important to mention that this talisman will only work if you play at melee range. What they did to this weapon was more a balance than a nerf, because even though they nerfed the stance and base damage of the projectiles, they increased the stance damage of the weapon part, which means that if you use the weapon with the buff of the projectiles but you're still hitting with the weapon, you are going to deal a great amount of stance damage, increasing the control you have over most bosses. In our flask of Wondrous Physic, we are going to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear and the Magic Shrouding Crack Tear. However, if you don't want to use the Blood Sucking Crack Tear, a great alternative is the spike crack tier. However, to make an effective use of that tier, you will have to play at melee range. I don't know why, but this weapon devours stamina, so be sure to craft some pickle turtle legs to boost your stamina regeneration speed. In order to obtain the max performance of this weapon and to have an optimal build, we are going to use 50 on vigor, 35 on endurance, 16 on strength, 45 on dexterity, 75 on intelligence, and 33 on faith. Golden Vow, Hall of Shabriri, and Terra Magica are going to be our main buffs. And as you can see, I have my Eschatology Blessing on the level 20, and if you want to destroy your targets as I do, then be sure to have it on the level 20 as well. Now that we have completed and optimized our build, what do you say if we begin with the boss fights? Okay guys, now I'm going to show you how to buff your character with this build. The cool part of the nerf is that now it's a little bit easier to use the weapon. First we are going to use our Flask of Wondrous Physic, then we are going to cast Golden Bow and immediately we are going to use our Pickle Turtle Neck, which is completely optional of course, and now we are going to use the skill of the weapon to trigger the weapon buff. Now we are going to use our body buff, in this case Hall of Shabriri, which is the best body buff for this type of build. Now refill your HP, your FP, and switch to your staff to be ready to cast Terra Magica if you are going to do it. It is not necessary to use it in every boss fight. And also if you find it not optimal, as in the first phase of Malenia, or in fights like Relana or the Divine Beast, then you don't have to do it at all. Where I actually recommend you to use Terra Magica is in Radan's Promise Consort boss fight. There it is going to be extremely useful. Hey brother, stop the cap. Big hit right there, very valuable, nice. I can use it here. Again, okay. 
Amazing. Let's go. Take that, homie. Take that. Oh, and goodbye. Oh, amazing, bro. <laughs> Okay, there is our Terra Magica. This is so broken, man. <laughs> nice, careful here. Where are you going, bad boy? Take this. Oh, oh beautiful. Here we prepare. Oh! <laughs> here we go. Here, Relana. Let's do this. This is fantastic. Come on. Let's go. Easy. <laughs> wow, I was nervous a little bit. <laughs> In this fight, in this fight, the best you can do is not use Terra Magica. You see, this not that helpful. What are we do, homie? Where are you going, bad boy? Take this. Boom. Easy peasy, guys. <laughs> I'm going to use this one. And I'm going to use my... Okay, somehow it's working, I guess. Nice. Oh, that was close, man. Come on, I got this. Come on. Oh, beautiful, baby. <laughs> so we cast Terra Magica as soon as we can. Not too early, though. Here is perfect. We took handle weapon, dodge, dodge again. And we start destroying this bad boy. Nice. This is amazing, baby. I don't have the buff. I have it. Amazing, bro. And we use it again. You hand your weapon. Dodge. Dodge forwards. Oh, my. amazing. Come on. <laughs> oh, my God. That was quite close. Okay, here we go, Romina. Nice. Beautiful. Amazing. Give me that pretty hit, baby. Come on. And say goodbye. Let's go. The amount of damage we are dealing with this weapon is not normal, bro. <laughs> and this way is very simple to play. Just cast it immediately. Dodge and attack. And this way you will be fine. This is very good. And get a heavy hit on him, bro. This is very, very nice. And get another heavy hit on him. This is fantastic, guys. This is very good. And he just destroy him. And destroy him again. Oh, <laughs> just at the right moment. And... Give it the final hit. And that's it for Adan, baby. <laughs>